All right, another rant for me. So nasogastric lavage for upper GI bleed needs to go the way of the dodo bird. We need to stop doing NG lavage for upper GI bleed. So the people who keep asking for it, there's two main reasons that they ask for it. Number one is that a positive nasogastric lavage is predictive of a high risk lesion. And number two is it gives them better visualization when they're doing endoscopy. Well, let's go through these one at a time. Study from 2004, NG lavage before endoscopy. Does an aspirate predict a high risk lesion? And this is what they found when they crunched the numbers. If you saw a bloody aspirate, 75% of the time, it was a high risk lesion, but that means 25% of the time it wasn't. So one in four, although there was blood on NG lavage, were not a high risk lesion. If there was clear or bile aspirate, 15% of the time, there was a high risk lesion. So it also was not predictive of a high risk lesion. What about visualization? Well, there was another study from 2011 that took IV erythromycin versus NG lavage versus IV erythromycin plus NG lavage. And here's what they found. NG lavage was no better at four things, visualization, duration of the endoscopic procedure, rebleeding, or need for a second EGD. So a better practice is 30 minutes prior to doing endoscopy, give 250 milligrams of erythromycin. This will give you the same visualization without causing discomfort to the patient, and it's clearly not predictive. Now, what are some of the cons? Well, it's a painful procedure if you've ever had it done, and it doesn't really improve any patient-oriented outcomes. So this is an old study, 1999, okay? And they took 1,100 procedures commonly done in the emergency department, and they're broken up by the ones that get sedation and the ones that don't. And they had patients rank the procedure how painful it was on a scale of zero to 100. And guess what the most painful procedure was? NG lavage. It was more painful than incision and drainage of abscess. It was more painful than Foley placement. Patients find this procedure very uncomfortable. Now, what about patient-oriented outcomes? Another older study, 2011, 600 upper GI bleed patients. And they said, does it improve 30-day mortality mean hospital length of stay, transfusion requirements, or timing of endoscopy. It didn't improve any of the patient-oriented outcomes, including mortality. The only thing it did was it got GI in sooner. They performed the procedure much faster, which I find is usually an issue of the time of day or the time of week that you're calling the consultant for help. In the 2012 Association of Gastroenterology Guidelines, it's in their guidelines, in upper GI bleed, NG lavage is not required for diagnosis, prognosis, visualization, or therapeutic effect. The bottom line here is, is that this is a practice that needs to stop. We need to stop doing NG lavage for patients with upper GI bleed. We can just say no, it's in their guidelines. I left PMID PubMed numbers for you. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Luckily, this is something that I'm seeing less and less of. So I think the word is finally starting to get out. But any questions, comments, thanks for tuning in.